This is one of the most deceptively simple puzzles of all time. For small systems, it takes less than a few steps to solve, but grows insanely time-consuming as you scale it up. But in spite of that, scientists have found a very promising way to reduce it down from decades to mere days. Here's how it works. Let's say you're a tour guide trying to design a tour of your city. There are many ways in which you can traverse every attraction in the city, and from experience, you know that the customers will love the tour more if you don't bore them by visiting the same place twice. Now, this might seem easy, but not all the roads connect every location to one another. So, if you pick the wrong path, you will end up being forced to visit the same location no matter what you do. This isn't too hard of a problem if there are just a few locations to visit, but as you increase the number of locations and connections, the problems just become unbearably hard to start. In fact, it's not only difficult for us, but even computers have a hard time solving such a problem. And this is known as the infamous Hamiltonian path problem. Here's why it's so difficult. Let's look at the most basic level of solving this problem. And to really make sense of what's going on, I am going to represent each path as a block. The engraving on each block represents where you're coming from and where you're going to. So effectively, I am just reframing the problem from a messy web into a nice, straight, arrangeable line. What I'm going to do first is that I'm going to create a baseline method by going about solving this in the worst way possible. Like I said, baseline to compare stuff to. In this scenario, the computer would have to test every path simply because it does not know any better. In a block analogy, it's the equivalent of putting all the blocks in a bag and randomly bringing them out to create our path. In our example, there are 12 possible blocks, so there will be 12 possible options for our first slot of 12. Once we choose our first slot, there are going to be 11 possible slots left, since there are 11 blocks remaining. So in total, 12 times 11 possible options. And as you keep going and going, you always multiply by one less than the previous until you run out of your blocks. A mathematical shorthand for this is done by putting an exclamation mark next to 12. This is called the factorial operation. This also works for however many paths you have, so if there are n paths, then there are n factorial maximum ways of going about arranging them. And if the computer takes one second for each step, then the whole process takes n factorial seconds. So this is why the problem is very much doable with a small number of connections, but it gets worse really, really fast. Computer scientists have come up with various ways to keep cutting down on the time it takes to solve this problem, but even so, for these more efficient algorithms, it takes a long time to solve the problem. This problem is difficult for silicon computers, yes, but not for biological ones. If at its best the computer takes thousands of steps to find the correct path, then our biological equivalent takes only 15 steps. So what is going on here? How can something like a colony of bacteria outwit a fully fledged computer? And the answer has to do with something computers don't have that living things do. But to understand why anyone in the right mind would think of using biological computers, let's jump back to the year 2000. Back then, there has been an emerging field known as synthetic biology. This field is all about viewing parts of an organism as if they were electronic parts, and we can combine these parts, like Legos, in order to program living cells to do custom things that we want. To these biologists, DNA is just a long string of instructions, blueprints, if you will, that contains the information to produce proteins, which are like little assembly line robots that can rearrange one molecule into another, transform UV light into various colors, store oxygen in blood, and so much more. Not only are living things similar to computers, they also have two abilities that computers really don't have, reproduction and evolution. 
A very slow computer can certainly outwit a very fast one, given that there are billions of them. So with these three things, scientists have all the tools they need to tackle this problem. They created blocks of DNA that represent the path blocks we saw earlier. Each number on the block represents half of a unique protein's blueprint. Let's say it's the instructions for glowing green for two, red for four, and so on. They first stitch the DNA without caring about the correctness of it all. Then they mark the separations between the blocks so that they can be shuffled around and rotated around. If the DNA are shuffled around and lands incorrectly, then the bacteria won't do anything since the instruction is broken. But on the perfect chance that the two halves match up, the bacteria now glows green, indicating that we have bridged the path properly. And if the bacteria manages to connect all the proteins correctly by displaying all the traits we've encoded for each number, we can extract that bacteria's DNA and sequence it. Then we've got the solution to our Hamiltonian path. Isn't that ingenious? Here it is concretely. The researchers used a simple path as a proof of concept. If everything is correct, then the bacteria glows green and red, making yellow. Then they can just pick out the yellow colonies and just sequence them. Now, some of you may ask, couldn't you just use a computer to do this? But think of it this way. The odds of you shuffling through all of that until you get the answer is quite, quite low. The catch is that there's only one computer, but if you culture these bacteria for a day, there will be billions of them that can all share the work. And as some of you may know, these bacteria grow exponentially. So the performance of the bacteria is just the log of the computers. And yes, as expected, this technology does still have some caveats. Some things like this can be toxic to the bacteria, or the proteins might conflict with each other, and so on and so forth. What's amazing though, is that this approach just further opens up more possibilities of what we think life is, what we can do with it. All the basic logic gates already exist in biology long before the silicon counterparts. And what's even cooler is that a simple bacteria is actually a Turing complete machine, meaning that it can do whatever a modern day computer can do. And in the next couple of videos, I'll be showing you all of these cool things and much more. But for now, let's just end this video like this here. Like and subscribe. Goodbye.